applications of rational expressions. So, um, basically I'm just going to work through a couple of the examples in the book. This is page 188, example 3. And as with anything you're doing, you can always look at the textbook for ways to do stuff, um, as well as the videos that I make, as well as any videos that you can find on the internet, Khan Academy, uh, many others, just search on YouTube, find something that uh, makes sense to you. Uh, the car, the speed, speed of a plane is seven times as great as the speed of a car. The car takes three hours longer than the plane to travel 315, that's a three, kilometers. Determine the speed of the car and the speed of the plane in kilometers per hour. This is a distance speed time question, and so one basic step, we should know that distance is equal to speed times time. Um, if I'm going 100 kilometers an hour and I'm spending three hours driving to Edmonton, 100 times three gives me 300 kilometers, which is the distance to Edmonton. And of course, this equation may be rearranged. Common solving method. Uh, we have word problems. With word problems, you have to lay out your variables. And one of the easiest ways to do that with the distance speed time problem is with a table. So in this table, we are going to have the car, the plane, boss, the plane, so car, plane, and expressions for distance, speed, and time. Okay, what goes where? Well, generally, look at the last sentence of a word problem. Determine the speed of the car and the speed of the plane in kilometers per hour. So we want to know the speed of the car and the speed of the plane. So let's call this the speed of the car. Let's call that C speed of car and the speed of the plane is seven times as great so it's seven C that's our variable the distance traveled they're both traveling 315 kilometers and now what we're going to do is we're kind of going to come up with an expression for time and time is distance divided by speed so the time for the car is 315 over C and the time for the plane is 315 over 7 C and there needs to be some relationship here and so what is relationship the car takes three hours longer than the plane okay so who's longer well the time of the car is longer than the time of the plane so the time of the car, more time, if I want these to be equal, then I will take the speed of the plane. This is less time, so we're going to add 3 to it so that they'll be equal to each other. Okay, how do we solve this? Well, first off we say C can't be 0. Uh, in essence, do we really need to write that down? Well, it's just C can't be 0, the time can't be 0. Uh, that's really not an option here anyways, or sorry, C, that's not the time, C is the speed of the car, but that can't be zero. All right, our lowest common denominator is 7C. I'm going to multiply through by 7C. The 315 has the C already. This 315 here has the 7C, and this 3 is going to be multiplied by 7C. And so, in order to solve this rational expression, we are going to take 315 times 7, that's, uh, what, 2300 times 7 is 2100, and then on top of that, we have 7 times 15 is 70, and 35, 2205 is equal to 315 plus 21c move down a little give some space okay so 21c I like my variable on the left side and I'm gonna move this over so 2205 minus 315 
is 1890. It doesn't matter which side. Since it's an equal sign, I could write 1890 equals 21C, or 21C is 1890. So C is 1890 divided by 21, which is 9090. So what is C? C is the speed of the car, and the speed of the plane will be 7C. So let's write this out. The speed of the car is 90 kilometers per hour, period. The speed of the plane is seven times that, 630 kilometers per hour. Okay, how do we check this? The way I check a word problem is I take these numbers and I go back to the original description. The speed of a plane is seven times as great as the speed of a car. Okay, 90, 630, check. The car takes three hours longer than the plane to travel 315 kilometers. Okay, so the plane at 630 kilometers an hour is going to take, uh, to travel 315, is going to take a half of an hour. Right, time is distance over speed. 630 over 315 is 0 0.5. Uh, 315 to get the time divided by 90. So 315 divided by 90 is 3, let me go over here, 315. No calculator handy. 3, 270, 45, period, 0, bring down the 0, 3.5, so that'll be 3 and a half hours, okay, so 3 and a half hours as compared to a half hour, the car does take 3 hours longer than the plane to travel that distance. Okay, next example, page 189, example 4, uh, you can pause and read this if you like. Uh, so I've made a table, distance, speed, time. Every, when I do distance, speed, time problems, when distance is speed times time, I like to make a table. So Melanie drove 404 kilometers, 404, from Edmonton to Banff in the same length of time. That means our times are going to be equal, but we don't have an expression yet. Uh, same length of time as Heidi took to drive 364 kilometers from Edmonton to Jasper. Melanie drove 10 kilometers per hour faster than Heidi, and ultimately, hey, what do we want to find? At what speed did Heidi drive in kilometers per hour? All right, let's throw in good old X. And Melanie drove 10 kilometers per hour faster, so X plus 10. And time, time is distance over speed, so 364 over X, and 404 over x plus 10. And what do we know about these times? So in the last one, one was three hours longer. In this case, it's the same length of time. So we can just equate these. 3, 6, 4 over x is equal to 404 over x plus 10. Now, we know that x can't be 0 and x can't be negative 10. We shouldn't run into a negative speed, and Heidi can't be stopped. So these really don't come into play in here. We're not going to solve and find one of the non-permissible values. We're going to multiply through by x times x plus 10, or really, in this case, it's cross-multiply, the end result. The 364 gets multiplied by the x plus 10, the 404 by the x. 364x plus 3640 is 404x. Okay, let's move this over, really just subtracting. So subtract 364 from 404, which will give us 40. So 40x is equal to 3640. X is 3640 divided by 40, which works out to 91. 91. So Heidi is going 91 kilometers per hour. Heidi is nice. Is, very nice. Is driving 91 kilometers per hour. 
and actually more Heidi drove. Heidi drove 91 at a speed of at a speed of 91 kilometers per hour. So solving word problems, you must lay out your variable somehow. It could be a diagram. In this case, we're using a table. It could be a let statement. We could have just said, let the speed Heidi's driving be X. Let the speed that Melanie's driving be X plus 10, and then come up with our expressions. I like the table that organizes all the data. Show your equation, solve the equation, and state your answer in a sentence. Uh, we're not asked for how fast Melanie drove, but we should still figure this out. 364 divided by 91 will give us 4, and this will be 101. 404 divided by 101 is also 4, so they both would have taken 4 hours. And that's your check, and you do it by going back to the original problem or to this, but not over to here or parts down here where there may have been mistakes. So just go back to the original uh, and assuming you got these correct or to the original problem itself. So now it's on to the problems. Uh, this will finish the unit. Uh, we have some stuff coming up, but it's review and then a quiz coming up. And make sure you're good at all of this stuff and factoring and that you're quick at it. Uh, you're crisp. You check when you factor, you FOIL things out, make sure you've got the right factorizations. Uh, be aware of what you're doing. Am I multiplying and dividing, which is really just a simplification. Adding and subtracting, also a simplification. You can't solve something unless it's an equation. So don't try and solve if it's multiplying and dividing rational expressions or adding and subtracting. Those are only simplifications. You're just coming up with an equivalent expression. When we solve, there has to be an equal sign in there, and we'll solve, right? Solving linear equations, solving uh, quadratic equations by factoring, which was the precursor to being able to solve a rational uh, equation. Both of these examples were linears, but you may end up sometimes solving a quadratic. Okay, this completes our unit on rational expressions and equations, except for, uh, you know, review and a quiz coming up.